spicy little mommy Got the thick Latina body Make you wanna hide your bobby When she step into the party like No swiping in the house moves Selena in the house Is it a tit or quit The road to the golden boot Boots What's the titty baby? Selena has titties here. And yes, it is another episode of Tit or Quit, The Road to the Golden Boot. What's tea, baby? Look, I had just did a full-on fundraiser charity event over at Heart in West Hollywood for Sir Vodka for um, Drag Isn't Dangerous. Uh, make sure you guys are out there voting, honey. Use your voice so that they don't take away our rights as queer people and that drag queens can live to see another day and make another dollar, baby, because listen, it is rough out here in these streets right now. Look, I decided to have done do a ballad version of Boots at this um, show tonight. That's why my, I was hosting it and I ended up doing my ballad version of Boots. Here's a little snippet. You already know what the name is. Full set, freshly painted. Stepping out like we need famous. So no one did this thing. But um, that's why my makeup may look a little crusty. Baby, I ain't got my nails on anymore because I'm just out of, I've been in drag all day, all night. So here we are, but I'm so lit from the performance and from the show that I am excited to talk with you guys about this week's episode. Honey, who's getting the golden boot? Is there a golden boot in our midst anymore? Like, is it already established who may win it? Like, let's get into the episode right away. I don't think I have enough house cleaning for you. Um, I think I'll talk enough during the episode. Let's just jump right in because I want to get to these looks, baby. Let's do it. Oh, but first, we have to get into the Anitra fantasy, bitch. Yes, I'm Anitra today. You know she gave very uh, trade in the confessional, bitch. You know, Anitra is a really cute, handsome man. You look like a handsome boy. You look like a handsome boy. She is a very handsome boy. Let me tell you that. So when I had to find this outfit and um, this tattoo on my titties, bitch, I was like... We're just gonna give boy today because it's very Anitra. Anitra gave that bitch and you get a leftover drag face. So anyways, I just had to give a shout out to my sister, my Las Vegas hoe, Anitra. Does she have a last name? Anitra Isis Couture? I don't even know. Anitra, walk that duck, Paul, because RuPaul lived for her, bitch. You have no idea. RuPaul loved Anitra. Anyways, let's move on to this week's episode. You guys, you have no idea. So this boy hit me up on Instagram and was like, I made, I produced a little track for your intro. So if y'all heard, I'm going to play it again right now. Is it a tit or quit the road to the golden boot? Boots. Bitch, isn't that sickening? See, you guys are so amazing. Like, thank you guys for watching this shit and like <laughs> vibing with me, honey. You know, it's a small but mighty number of us out here, like, you know, making this happen together. So I live for you guys. Thank you for living for me. We're going to continue titter quitting. And let's see this week's episode. The category this week was See You Next Wednesday. The girls had to create their own outfits out of uh, materials in the workroom. And like I said, you know, those sewing machines are sinister the sinister is the perfect word those those needles horrible they have um professional um like junk junky juki machines for us there too but they're all broken and like i <laughs> this so it's they try but it's really hard you guys so anything these bitches make it's really astounding to see what is created especially in this short amount of time you either choose to sleep i think they they talked about it a lot on this episode which was interesting like you choose to sleep or you choose to stay up all night and work on your stuff so i know for my season i had stayed up every single night Working, 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 working. I did not sleep whenever we had to do design challenges. I brought that stuff home and was in the bottom each time for it. But that's neither here nor there. Because this week we need to find the golden boot winner, honey. I got one the golden boot for a non-design challenge. But usually, like I always say, it usually goes to a design challenge. So maybe one of the girls will get it. Maybe they don't. Let's see. Let's go with the top 10 of the week. Let's jump right in. Oh, 
And again, this, uh, not only was it a design challenge, you had to do goth. It was like elevated glam goth is what they wanted. So there was like a nice, interesting twist on the design aspect, which is so random. I kept seeing memes and tweets about how like, they just wanted this category so that they can do the sped up version of Dance 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 by Lady Gaga, the Wednesday version. They just wanted to keep up with the trends of TikTok. So they decided, oh, we're gonna do this this song for the lip sync. Like, like it was, it's a key online. If y'all had seen all that stuff, it's very, it's very, it feels very forced, right? Like, oh, let's just force this runway category so we can do this song that'll go viral because it's a viral song. But baby, that song came out, what, like a year ago now? It's, but I mean, they filmed it a year ago. So it was interesting when I did Running Up That Hill, literally that song had just come out on Netflix for Stranger Things. So as I was lip syncing it, it was like becoming viral in real time. So that was really interesting how Drag Race kind of knows these trends and stuff. So it's... I don't know. I think there's a secret Illuminati situation happening with TV land, especially now that they're with MTV. This is all um, off the record or this is all alleged, by the way. I, this is just my conjecture, bitch. I'm making stories up because, you know, I'm a cons conspiracist in my head. It gets me in trouble. But I really feel like there is some Illuminatus work at hand sometimes on Drag Race. Like there are things in there that are very Simpsons. You know what I mean? You know like Simpsons be telling the future? It's just, it gives that. I was there, trust me. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but if you guys have conspiracy theories, please put them in the chat, because I love conspiracy theories. They're so much fun. And like, honestly, I think they're true, all of them. No matter what it is, I think it's real. Like, Katy Perry is JonBenet Ramsey, house down boots. I think Selena's father set up the killing I th I'm just saying, conspiracy. Um, I think Selena Sinis didn't deserve to be in the bottom ever. Nymphia win. Ooh, 97% tit and a 3% quit. Now, I did check the 3% quits and there are some people I knew in there, honey. And I was a little like, y'all, y'all hating on for real, for real. Y'all being real haters, like in real life, bitch, because this did not deserve a quit by any means. See, this is what I'm talking about. Nymphia is such a secret slut. Like, this bitch is so talented, but she doesn't need, she can't let y'all know, bitch, because then becomes higher threat levels. So she plays this little game in the workroom where she's in, in like insecure, wada wada wada, whoop de whoop. But bitch, here she is delivering every freaking time. Baby, this look, when it came down the runway, I will say the scooter and booting she did, it was kind of cute, but also I was just like, girl, walk. I know you can walk in it, but also, Bitch, this was cunt. This was, bitch, this was sickening. Like, it was really giving, like, couture, fashion, runway realness. So, like, as a drag queen, I don't know if y'all do this. A lot of drag queens, what they'll do, right? Especially, like, I've, I've been guilty of this. They'll go on Google and they'll be like, if the category is goth, be, I'll type in gothic couture runway fashion. And then I'll see what pops up. Bitch, Nymphia would pop up if I typed that in because this is exactly what we would see on Google. Bitch, I could probably, I'm gonna do it right now. Hold on. I'm gonna do it right now. Gothica, what, is, what was the count? Gothica runway couture um, outfit fashion. Okay, this is what the drag queens do. And then they see, uh, literally, Nymphia wins is better than all of these on here, bitch. Like, like come on, girl. Bitch. Don't blame me, girl. It is crazy what she created, honey. It's 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 so it's it's art. It's fashion. It's also she she said that she went to a fashion school. She's a seamstress or something like that. It really really showed. It was just iconic. They were trying to give her shit for covering her face too much. I thought it was sickening, bitch. It was giving storyline. It was giving everything without having to tell you nothing, bitch. Iconic. Going down in history as number one fashion bitch of the season, bitch. I think so very much, but not getting a golden boot from us. So let's say their names. I understand. Ooh, Hershey LaCour Jete gave this a quit. The pork chop queen of the season, baby, said no man. But also, I went through and Hershey quitted everyone's looks. <laughs> I think it's because it's a design challenge. She went home on the first design challenge. So baby, Miss Hershey was like, I'm not messing with these hoes. Quick, 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 quick. It was, when I saw that, while I was looking through the quits, I kind of giggled to myself because Hershey's a key baby. Go follow Hershey LaCorgette if you haven't. I love that bitch so much. Okay, moving on. We have Dawn, 87% tit and a 13% quit. Now she had the astrophysics going on, the chandelier chingamaderas and like, 
Baby, it looked really cool. I gotta give it to this bitch. With the little things on her head, she brought the elf ears back, but I didn't even care because the gown and the fit was giving something interesting. It was giving thoughtfulness. It was giving fashion and hardware, bitch. It was giving um mathematical solutions, bitch. The way that she had to come up with how to hold these things and the fishing line and all that, baby. She did the most. And I think it worked in her favor. I think Lux on the pit stop mentioned that there was like details that were missed because it was all black and like, kind of you couldn't see like the differentiations of the thingy around so there was that sure but i think don did amazing this week definitely a top tip for me this week and i'm happy to see that y'all voted the same um only 13 percent quit but i mean we got out of the 90s so there's some people out there who aren't really vibing with the the elf situation right or maybe they just didn't like the outfit but again i think if there was like a detail within the chandelier against the black like that that really didn't help you can't really see what was going on, right? But when you look close, you look at it, bitch, it's a, it's a moment. She did her design that she showed in the workroom and made it come to life, which I thought was great. So props to your mama. Uh, no golden boot, I don't think, for this. Let's see what the kids have to say. I understand. Ooh, Jiggly Caliente gave this a tip. I love when Jiggly be playing titter quick. It's just like, this bitch's opinions make me giggle so much because she's so funny. I love her so much. Moving on, we have Morphine with 84% tit and a 16% quit. Baby, I thought Morphine was fantastic. I thought Morphine was great. The fact that she was in the bottom three did not make sense to me. It's given very much this thing where like, they don't want Latinas to succeed, bitch. It's like... They always want to use them as the butt of the joke or as the cha-cha-ha-ha, -ha, little jokey joke joke, whatever the case may be. But it's like, can we give the Latin girls their flowers? Like, what's the tea here? Because Morphine looks sickening, bitch. She should have been in the top for me, I think. This gown, I thought was, um, it was constructed and, like, not basic to me. Like, it had elements to it that were very far more or less than basic. I will say, like, the makeup was sickening, but this is a design challenge, right, for the look. So the look needs to stand out more. So I get where people are like, she looks so beautiful. Yes, she does. And her makeup was different. It was sickening. But the design, the challenge was the design, right? But here's the other tea, bitch. Because are we judging construction and, like, what they're putting together? Are we... we judging the stylistic choices of the design itself. You know what I mean? There's so many different ways to judge this shit, which is why it's so annoying when we see how they decide to choose to judge it. It's like, girl, you could have went any which way to, about judging this and you chose to hark on one thing. But for someone else, they hark on something else. You know what I mean? It's not a necessarily even playing field to me, personally, as someone who's been there like, it really gives that, and there's a lot of gray area there, right? So they can kind of do whatever they want at the end of the day. So I thought this should have been top tip. Um, there was 16% quit, so some of y'all still weren't vibing. Let's see. Say their names. Ooh, Carrie Colby in the house. Gave this a tip, baby. That's right. She saw, girl, I know Carrie, bitch. So when she smells a, an inkling of transness, she's like, Shh. her little magic spirits come out. Oh. Speaking of conspiracies, Carrie Colby is a conspiracy ass bitch. She loves a conspiracy, honey. I once sat in a kitchen with her and she explained to me the entirety of what the Illuminati is, what they do, how they're working in our society today in this day and age. It is a key, baby. So if you ever want a good tangent, get Carrie Colby to tell you a conspiracy theory. She has them, bitch. It is so good. Ooh, juicy, honey. Moving on, we have Safira with a 79% tit and a 21% quit. Now, she sold this with her storytelling on the runway, honey. The gown was, uh, you know, we have to say she's been making the operetta gown, so she's been very on brand within that realm. It's kind of funny to me that, like, the opera gown is her brand only when it comes to design challenges. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? This one I thought was cool. I like the cutout in the front. I like that we couldn't see inside of any lining or the bottom of the little petticoat. Um, and she sold RuPaul saying, ooh, the Haunted Mansion on break. Like, like that, that killed me, tickled me, and then really sold the story even more for me as I watched Sephira go down the runway. I was like, oh, very that. And like, I was sold, right? So I thought she did a great job. I don't think this is golden boot worthy, so let's keep it pushing. Say their name. <laughs> We have Marsha in the house. Marsha three times gave this a quit. Ooh. <laughs> Marsha, I love Miss Marsha. Baby, she's in rehearsal for a Broadway show, Cabaret. She's in Cabaret right now on Broadway, baby. Like, this is the dream, bitch. I'm so proud of her. Um, and I know she's in rehearsal right now playing Titter Quit. I love it. Obsessed. Moving on. Oh, 
We also have other Drag Race sisters, Robin Fierce, Lux Noir. Like, they all gave this a quit. They were not vibing with Safira's look. But look, Safira's a bigger girl. It's easy to design on a skinny bitch. It's easy. If I was skinny as fuck, I can drape a little chinga that on my body and it'll look like fashion. But you put it on a big girl, you have to worry about proportions and the waist and then the hip and then the shoulders and the, it's just different ball game girl. If they had design challenges, but then brought in models that they all got to put the same model in, the same outfit, different game, different story, different outcomes. Just saying, just saying, it's, see, it's not a fair game, but you gotta make do with what you got to do because that's the competition. It's Rue's game, not yours. Moving on, we have Q with a 71% tit and a 29% quit. Now, Q, I will say, when she came down the runway, she turned around and I saw the detail of the bow, the giant one down the middle of the back. I was like, oh, this is like, this is kind of sickening, baby. This was really good, but I will say, I gotta throw it in here, honey. The way that Q tries to sell stuff on the runway really just cringes me out. Like her little, like her weird theatricalness from the 1980s that she be doing on the stage really just be making me like uncomfortable. It really does, honey. But I will say the garment itself was really cool. I love the little swirly thing on the head. Like that was cool. But this, this was cool. It was honestly what sold it to was the lining. Like when she opened it up and swung it over and the lining revealed itself in that fabric, I was like, oh, oh, this is, this is good. She, she made this, she did that, she did that. It was really good. Um, was it my favorite? No, but I can really give her flowers to where flowers are due because I thought this was, it was a moment. And she ended up winning, which I thought was interesting. I don't know what Q's doing for them, like story-wise or producing-wise, because it's not like we get confessionals from her. We don't get a lot of backstory about her, but she's still there somehow. She's, every time she's lip synced has been horrible. Her performances are not that great. Her musical was not good, but they gave her flowers anyway. So like, there's something happening behind the scenes that we're not seeing that this girl is just like kind of continuing to flow by. Is it because they like her looks? Like she's gonna deliver on the runway every time. So we're interested to see what, I don't know. I'm just saying it's not my show. It's not my competition. As a viewer, it's confusing. It's not making sense to me, but props to you mama. Let's say their names. We have Lux in the house, gave this a Lux Noir tip. Also my girlfriend Godoy here, Miss uh, Fashionista to the stars. Uh, Godoy also said it was a tip. So the fashion girlies are saying it's yay okay, so let's move on and be gay. I look crazy, bitch. Like my makeup looks horrible. This wig is like falling off. It's lump-sided to one side, my lips crusty. I look a mess, bitch. I, I know I look crazy. I know I look, this episode's crazy. And I'm like, we're plowing through, bitch, but it's because I feel crazy and ugly and I do not like feeling that way. Next week, I'm gonna give you full glamour, bitch. What if I have time? I have the busiest week next week. I started because it's the beginning of March. I started my, um, I told y'all I was gonna do a series where like I document throughout the month everything I do for my drag career, the hustle and bustle of it all, what y'all don't see. Uh, I started filming that tonight because I got last minute asked to host this event. So I was like, baby, let's start the camera. And I didn't even tell you what I did March 1st and March 2nd, honey. That's how my month started. So here we are, baby. Titter quit, let's keep it pushing. We have Plain Jane with a 66% tit and a 34% quit. Now she had the little strappy straps with the little bows and the little things. I'll be honest, like, I think she kind of oversells herself in the confessional when she's describing herself, like, I'm everything, I'm this and that, and I'm giving so much this. I'm like, girl, you are saying the most because what I'm seeing is not that. It's great, it's fine, it's fine, it's a fine look, it's fine. But when you're standing next to Nymphia and Q, honey, this doesn't give, you know what I mean? And like, again, do we go back to the Gothica, right? Like the Gothica, Adams Family, Morticia, Beetlejuice tees, like, I guess this kind of gives straight jacket and it's kind of feels fitting to see her in, in that kind of a vibe. <laughs> but I don't know, I don't know, it was fine. Oh, that's what took me out, the corset. The corset underneath showing, like, 
I get it, that's a, an aesthetic and a vibe for some people, but I don't wanna see the corset. I have to work overtime to try to hide my corset and it be poking out. You be seeing it sometimes with the outfits. Like the corset, hiding of the corset is so hard, but when you're a skinny bitch, you don't gotta wear a corset. You don't have to deal with that problem. So you can wear crop tops and shit. Bitch, I don't got the luxury. I mean, I could, but it won't give you the shape and body that I want. So I gotta work extra hard to make sure it's covered and create something that covers the corset. The fact that I can see your freaking, ugh, that, I was like, I rolled my eyes the minute I saw it. Cause I was like, bitch, your corset, I can see your corset. And like, sure, it's like a goth runway. So we can kind of like the punk rockness of that can get a pass, but bitch, no. Take the corset off or fucking make something to hide it or create a bodysuit underneath. That's how I felt personally. But y'all titted this. Let's say their names. Oh, we have Dallas Tetas in the house. Miss Pinche Queen uh, voted this a tip. So she like, I can see, I can see Pinche wearing this, but she wouldn't wear the corset, bitch. She would just have her, her furry belly hanging out, bitch, and we would live. Again, I think um, someone said, I heard on a podcast or something, that they were like, oh, we would see this in the club and we'd like tip it and it'd be fine. Yeah, in the club, it'd be fine. Um, again, when you're standing next to Safira and Nymphia and all these girls, it's like, you have to try to elevate, you know? But it, again, it's hard in the workroom, y'all. It is so hard to come up with the design pressured, you're hungry. I was on keto, so I wasn't even eating, bitch. I was starving. <sighs> it's hard, y'all. It's hard. Okay, moving now. We have Maya in the house with a 29% tit and a 71% quit. Now, baby, we are on the quits. The quit, the quit, 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 quits. Before, Plain Jane had 66 tit. Now we jumped all the way down to 29, 29 tit, honey. It's a big jump from Plain Jane to Maya. And I think we only have plasma left, honey. So like, we have to give it to these girls. This season, the girls are bringing the fashions, they're bringing the design, they're bringing the drag of it all. So like, I love to see it, you know? With only, we wanna even say two duds, like who are in the bottom. I don't even think this was a dud to be quite honest. I really liked that Maya turned around and it was like all lace in the back. I thought that was kind of like, a, ooh, sexy, goth, sex goth. Like I was here for it. Of course, everyone's like, Safira made it, Safira made it, Safira made it. Listen, the hardest part about sewing and constructing a garment is cutting the pattern. If you don't have a pattern to make, to then cut the fabric, to then be able to sew it, sewing is the easy part. So yes, yeah, she did the easy part, which was just the sewing. But cutting of the fabric is the hardest part about the stuff because that's how that's where you get your fit. That's where you get the design elements is within the patterning and the cutting of the fabric. So Safira did do all that work for her and everyone was ragging on her so hard for it. Like y'all. So like I see so much Maya hate online. Like so face when I use Facebook, like it's literally all the old gays that I know. Like all the all the gays over 35 that I know, old ass gays. They're all on Facebook because they don't know how to use Instagram. They don't know how to use Twitter. They're on Facebook and they be sharing their opinions on there. This old white man that I know that I actually like, I like him. He was like, Maya needs to go. How is she still here? Da, 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 da. And I was like, listen, you middle-aged white gay, shut the f*** up. Like, it's just, I get it. Y'all watch the show and there it's not personal to you. You don't know these girls. You don't do drag. You're not going to drag clubs and like, supporting drag queens. So I understand the hate that people have for queens because to them, it's just a character on TV. They don't see it as a human being with human feelings and a human art form they're trying to present to the world. Like y'all don't see that. You know what I mean? So I get it when I read the shit, but as the artist getting the negative critiques comments, concerns, and seeing that he's talking shit about this poor girl who's just trying to fucking make it work on this show, who got this big opportunity to make something with her life, to get out of the streets, the hood, wherever she's from, and now she's on TV and she gets to have a moment and all y'all do is rag on the girl. For her to read that and feel that hate is hard on the girl. I was that girl, baby, so it is, it's so hard. But like, you, I know I have to think of the opposite flip end of the coin, which is like, we're just characters on the TV to you. Like it, you all not, are not treating it as personally. I mean, some of the comments be personal, I feel like, but I have to remember that it's just entertainment to you guys. And you guys are just playing along and rooting for your team. So 
it's such a double-edged sword. It's so hard to maneuver as a girl on the other side. So uh, my heart goes out to Maya because y'all were hating on her this week for sending Plasma home. But bitch, I'm happy she sent the bitch home. Booze, let's go. To, let's say, let's get, we'll get to it for the Changla bitch, but let's go to the, um, let's go to the next part, whatever. Okay, we have Robin Fierce in the house. Gave this a tip. You see, Robin Fierce thought it was good. Like, I thought it was good. But of course, because the fear helped her, we get it. Let's move on to the last quit of the week. Miss Plasma with 11% tip and an 89% quit. Honey, she got the most quits of the week. Yeah, this was wild. <laughs> Honestly, I see what she was doing. And, you know, I don't know if it's because she's using her real body. Has she had hips or something? It would have maybe read a little better. Because it's honestly sugar and spice. It's giving like, it's giving Bratz doll teas, right? Like I think that's what she was going for, like Monster High, which is a vibe. But like for Plasma to be doing it, it's just such a departure from the brand that we know her to be. I don't think it served her. And like, that's the hard part, right? You go to Drag Race and you're like, well, I'll give them something different to, to prove my versatility. And it's like, baby, they'll say that to you just to mess with you, that they want to see something different. Like, they'll want to see you do something different. You'll go home that episode. Like, that's how it works over there. Never depart from who you are. Just stay true to who you are, baby. So this, of course, was a miss. I, I can just imagine her spending so much time on this coat that we barely even saw that's not very effective. So she probably spent all her time making this jacket and being like, oh, wow, I have to make pants and this bodysuit still. Oops. You know, like... She could have done so much more. I feel bad for the girl because she did really have a good showing. She won some challenges. She played the last couple episodes, to be honest. Her Snatch Game, her, her Rusical. Was her Snatch Game good? I don't even remember what these girls are doing anymore, girl. I'm so... Are y'all even watching this show? I'm not... Am I even watching this show, to be honest? Like, do we care? Do we even care? There's so many queens, girl. Like, can we, can we take a pause, please? Anyways... It's a boot, honey. Is it a golden boot, though? Because that's what we're here to do. We're here to find a golden boot. I don't think Maya was golden boot worthy. I don't think Plain Jane was golden boot worthy. I don't think any of these looks this episode were golden boot worthy. I don't necessarily think this is golden boot worthy. It's not exciting enough to me. It's just, like, not a great look on her. Because I think if someone else were to wear a version of this, it would, like, be kind of cunt because they would sell it because they got that sauce. They got that pussy, right? Sugar and Spice could probably sell this look because that's the brand. That's the vibes. Plasma's not the vibes, honey. Plasma wearing this reminds me of like, girl, when a grandma wears lingerie. <laughs> Have you seen those grandma porns? <laughs> ah! And they got their whole titties hanging in the in the bustier. And like, that's what this reminded me. It was giving grandma trying to be sexy. It was giving Dr. Sue Johansson, bitch. It was giving very that. It was just like, mama, stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Go go back to go back into the theater. Go back to rehearsal, mama. Like you didn't have to come to the courtyard. You, you're go go back to the bathroom stall. Go eat your lunch. Like it was giving very that. You know what I mean? Like, uh, we hate to see it. We hate to hate on it, baby. But it just is what it is. I'm so sorry, Plasma. Plasma went home. We'll get to it during the Golden Chancla, baby. Let's say their names. Everyone gave this a quit. Everyone. <laughs> Everyone gave it a quit. I can't say nothing else. Everyone gave this a quit, baby. So it is what it is, baby. Let's move on to the golden chunkla. Chunkla. Golden chunkla time, honey. This lip sync. Okay. I'll dance, dance, dance with my hands, hands. So I'm the bitch who will know the choreography and do the choreography on stage. All my single ladies, all my single ladies, honey. None of these girls did the dance. Like, I will say plasma was horrible to watch for me. I did not like it. I did not think she held her own. I did not think she was worthy of winning or staying because of that lip sync. The way the game works is if you're put into the bottom two for whatever reasons, whatever the circumstances may be, whatever the higher ups decide to do, you're in the bottom. Everything else out the window. You have to lip sync for your life. For your life. It's your last ultimatum. It's your last chance to prove why you sh your fight, your determination in the lip sync to stay another day. Everything else out the window. It doesn't matter. Track records, all that stuff don't matter. It's how is that lip sync, baby? And Maya whoops some ass on this lip. Chunkla! Chunkla! The back flips in the gown, bitch. Come on. This is the Maya I've been waiting to see. But I will say, why does she take shit off? Why does she take stuff off? Why are you taking stuff off? Stop taking stuff off. Why did you take your wig off? Why you kick off your shoe? All these things, baby. 
Make it work. Make it work with everything on. I feel like that is, um, I feel like that's kind of like, for me, if you can slay a lip sync without losing anything, or even if you do, like, I don't know. She purposely takes off her wig. Oh, the roses, the petals fall down. That was like, kind of cute. But then it was like the beanie thing, right? Like they said, ah, that kills it for me. The fact that she'd be taking stuff off, but I get it. That's what you have to do in order to do the flips. But let's look at Jax, honey. Jax be doing flips with her wig intact. She knows how to pull it and keep it down. Like if you ever watch Jax perform live, she'll do a flip and then go whoo and make sure her wig is back in place every time. It's kind of sickening. The bitch knows how to handle her hair so it's not flying off. That is, you know, to me, if you're gonna be doing flips and stuff, you should be able to do your flips and stuff in your wigs and your heels and your earrings. Jax does all her flips in her heels. That's all I'm saying. But we're talking about this season, these group of girls within this episode and this season, right? So Maya so far, Maya and Morphine are in the running for the golden chunk left for me. If there's another girl I'm missing that y'all think may deserve it, let me know in the comments. Um, I do think there's girls who should have been home. Sh I do think girls should have gone home and passed lip syncs and they didn't. So the outcome doesn't necessarily always ring true to me. But again, it's their show. They're going to do what they need to do to make their show continue to be successful. I will say that much. Maybe Plasma reached her rope. Maybe they want to set her up for an All-Stars to come back because she's so competitive. Who the hell knows? She lost that lip sync for me. I don't think her track record mattered, honey. She was in the bottom. You made the decision. Now you're here. Fight for it. The fight was not there for me. I don't know why I feel so passionate, but I think it's just because, like, as a drag queen who hustles who works, who hits the streets, who's actually out there in the streets doing this stuff. You know, Mistress says like, don't play on my profession. It really does feel that way sometimes, right? Drag is an art form and it's valid in all its forms that it, it encompasses, right? But as a working drag queen who is actually out here hustling in these streets, who has to work brunches and bar gigs and do all that, is doing drag in the sense of where drag comes from, honey. Maya is that, and Maya gave us that in the lip sync. So when I see like Plasma, and you know, Pla not to say that Plasma probably doesn't do that, she probably hustles too, but like th there's different levels to this stuff where it's like, you know, Mama Maya don't probably got a lot of money. She probably couldn't, she comes from Miami, honey. Like, you know, Plasma comes from what? Upstate New York, went to theater school, all the things, got the money, has got the support. Like there's different layers to this stuff as I watch it. So when a, someone like a Plasma goes home, I don't feel a thing. I see someone like Maya winning and that feel, that fills my heart. It fills my soul because I relate to the girl. You know what I mean? And I understand a lot of the Drag Race audience is not this. It's not like Maya. They're more like a Plasma, like a Dawn. The little privileged white girls, honey, they don't have traumas. They don't live a life the way they have had, like other girls have to live it. So I think that's where I kind of get like, passionate. I'm rooting for the girl who I know is getting it out the mud, who has opportunity to make more for their lives, for their families, from where they come from. That storyline I relate to the most, so I will always root for that, personally, for me. I can give flowers where flowers are due. So yes, Plasma, you're so talented. It's getting like more and more polished as it goes on. The videos she's putting out are fucking sickening. Give the girl her flowers, but I'm a root for the girl who I know has had it harder and is still making something of themselves, even if the cards are not in their favor. There's a lot of girls with cards in their favor. That's nice. You're going to have a great career. You're going to have a lot of fans because you got a demographic that you... That can't support you in that way. Work, bitch. I know I may sound a little bitter. I know this may come off a little bitter. I don't know. But, like, this is just the realness of how I feel as an artist who's in these streets making it, trying, trying to get out the mud. Like, I... I see that in Maya. She's just doing her best. And the people, y'all just, my point is, y'all just need to stop hating on Maya. She's doing her best. It is not her fault that she's still there. No, it's their, it's their show. They get to decide who gets to stay and who gets to leave. So stop picking on her. Leave the girl alone. She's doing her best on there. She went to Drag Race without half of her outfits that were supposed to be ready for her. So like, I love you, Maya. The, you can just, what I see is like, this girl has just been working, working. This is a working girl who's in these streets working. And that comes off in her lip sync and her performance. So I don't know. I think she's in the running for the golden chancla. Let me know what y'all think. Sorry, the vibe changed hard because like I got real, ah, I was just taken back. It's just hard. You know what I mean? Like not even just drag queens, like anyone out there, honey. Like if you are not 
a certain color. And mind you, I have a lot of privilege being more light-skinned than that guy do. But it's just hard. It's You don't get the same opportunities. You don't get the same shit. And I know I'm preaching. I'm a little high horse. It's like, we, we, we. It's not that I'm a victim. It's not that we're victims. It's just the truth of the matter. And like, sometimes we got to call it out because it doesn't get called out. And then we're sitting here like, why isn't X, Y, and Z happening? Why don't we see this and that on TV? Why aren't we getting this and that? And it's like, y'all hate on it when it is on TV or the TV is not actually supporting it. Like, I'm going to get off my horse. Well, I think the golden chocolate is going to either Maya or Morphine so far. Let me know in the comments what you think because we still got a lot more lip syncs. And we never know. There may be a lot of Perusa, another opportunity for more girls to show off their skills. So the chocolate is still up for grabs. The golden boots still up. I really feel like it's going to a mandatory meeting <laughs> or uh, Plasma has some has a look in there. Um, who else did we say? Q. This robot look, I think, is potential for Golden Boot. We're here to award the Golden Boot. I think we forget that when we're titting and quitting, too. We just, like, we're just, like, tit, quit, tit, quit. But, like, we're looking for a Golden Boot here. That's all I'm trying to do. Yes, I'm sharing my little opinions, X, Y, Z, whatever. But, honey, we're going to give away a Golden Boot. And I'm going to make one. <laughs> I'm going to make one of my own and send it to the girl, whoever wins it. So, like, prepare for that. I'm very excited. I'm going to send a Golden Chancla to whoever wins the Golden Chancla, too. We're going to decide that together as a team. Um, at the end of the series uh, but I thank you guys for joining me here on Titter Quit The Road to the Golden Boot there's another episode down I know I went through a little quick but like I said I look crazy we can all agree I look insane and I know that please go make sure you pre-save and pre-buy my EP Homegirl that comes out I think in two weeks Homegirl honey Homegirl Homegirl's coming my little EP's coming I can't wait to be performing it live and uh, giving y'all all the fantasy that I see in my head like You'll listen to it, but like, honestly, I wish I could give you the visuals that come along with it, but baby, videos are expensive. And there's like, the sponsors and the brands out there are not supporting the girls. They could be supporting with the creativeness and ideas that they got. They out here making things for X, Y, and Z, bitch. And it's like, okay. Ah, <laughs> you see how I get myself so like bitter all of a sudden, like frustrated. It's like I can't think about this stuff. It's so overwhelming. Anyways, go pre-save my, my little EP coming out March 22nd. Go buy some merch from my store, stitties.com slash shop. I have really cute merch. You can support these titties. Y'all can get cameos from me. I have cameos available if you want to go to Cameo and find me there. You can get your personalized message, baby. And um, keep streaming boots. I appreciate you guys so much. I thank you. I know it was a, a fast episode. But um, next week, I have a crazy... I see Nicki Minaj on Friday. And then I see Madonna on Monday. And then I'm going to the Queer Tees on Tuesday. I'm filming content on Wednesday. And then Thursday is the Glad Awards. So my, my weekend in week is going to be insane. I don't even know when I'm going to film Titter Quit or edit it. But like... That's why these episodes are a little fast because I need to be able to, to edit this stuff really fast. This, at least these next two weeks because I, I have to have a jam-packed schedule. So I'm doing my best. I'm doing this all by myself. I appreciate you guys for rolling with me and uh, hanging on in there. I love y'all. I'll catch you next week. Remember, baby, you a bad bitch. I don't know what's going on in your life. Uh, y'all don't care what's going on in my life. I just need you to understand that you're worth it. You are loved. You are capable and able to make shit happen regardless where you come from, who you are, what you look like. It's possible, but you have to believe it first because no one's going to believe it for you. If that's the biggest thing I've learned this week, to be quite honest, if we can be real, I'm having the hardest time because like, so I have to hustle on my own and make stuff happen by myself. And then all these people get to benefit from it without ever doing anything to make it happen. But I have to create it all. I have to create it all myself. And it's so frustrating. So like you have to make it happen yourself because no one's going to come over and be like, here us titties. I have this for you. Nope. That's not how it works out here. It's not how life works. You have to make it happen yourself. And I know it's hard to hear. I, I hate hearing it. I hate when I, I'm, I'm like venting to my friends and they're like, girl, you got to do it. We'll do it. I'm like, Ugh. so like Nike said with the check mark, bitch, just do it. Trust me, do it and then let them eat you up when the time comes because you'll be able to look back and say that was because of me, bitch. No one else could touch that. That was because of me at the end of the day. And that's going to give you confidence and security with who you are so that you know that you're that girl and no one else can freaking touch you. You feel me? I love you, homegirl. Keep your tits up. Let me get this fucking wig off, bitch. This is so ugly. Ugh.
I should have just done it like this. Is it giving Anitra? Ooh. <laughs>